Thank you for coming today. I'm Jennifer Chizik. I'm uh, with Broadcom, and I'm the product manager for a product called uh, Automation Analytics and Intelligence. I'm just going to refer to it as AI um, throughout this uh, presentation. So today's topic is going to focus on uh, monitoring and observability. Basically, AI is an observability platform for automation solutions, including Airflow. And so that includes monitoring and alerting and just in general uh, observability, which we'll talk a little bit more about. So to start with, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that are really common within the automation world. And this spans not just Airflow, but other automation products as well. The first challenge um, I'm going to talk about is siloed views. So in my opinion, this particular challenge has actually gotten even larger with the introduction of Airflow into large organizations. So if you're a large organization, you're typically running multiple automation solutions within your environment. Usually these solutions are provided by different vendors and, different, and run on different platforms. So you might have a distributed automation solution like at Broadcom we offer Autosys and Atomic as distributed enterprise automation solutions. You know, BMC has Control-M, which runs on the mainframe, runs also on distributed, and there's a host of other enterprise-wide automation solutions that you're probably familiar with and are probably running within your environments. And then, of course, there's Airflow. So if you're at this conference, I'm sure you're running Airflow within your environments as well. And so all of these different automation solutions are running in their own silos, and it's really difficult to get a centralized view across all of them and to have observability across all of these different platforms. And even if you're just running Airflow within your organization, you probably have different groups, different departments running different Airflows in different locations. And it's, again, it's difficult to get a centralized view across everything, a central, centralized uh, observability. So that's challenge number one. And then the next one is uh, no critical path visibility. So. In the, the companies that we work with are typically, in the, you know, very large Fortune 500 type companies, and they're often running hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of individual jobs, every jobs or tasks in Airflow, every single day, and it's impossible to focus on millions of tasks every single day. So what you really want to understand is the critical path because it helps you know where to focus, where your bottlenecks are, that type of thing. So most automation tools have limited or poor critical path visibility. So that's another challenge that we find kind of across the board in, in almost all of the automation solutions. Then we've got unpredictable service delivery. So any, anything that you're building in Airflow, any DAGs that you're building, they all represent business services that you're trying to deliver. And so you want to be able to deliver those services with some level of predictability and stability. And without proper observability, you actually don't even realize half the time if your, if your services are degrading, they're starting to trend longer over time, um, failing you know, every Friday, or you know, certain, certain patterns of behavior of these, of these business services. So yet another challenge. And then the last one is lack of historical insight. So you've got these, you know, potentially millions of jobs running every single day, all of this execution history. How do you take advantage of that execution history and, and use it in a meaningful way to help you predict the future, right? You want to understand history so history doesn't repeat itself in some cases, and also you can leverage that historical data in a meaningful way to improve the, your service delivery. So these are all challenges that we've built AI to address. Basically, we, what, what, the, what the AI product is, is it's an observability platform where you can connect it to all of these different automation engines that you have running in your environment, multiple airflows, multiple autosyses, CA7 running on the mainframe. There's actually a whole host, which I'll show you, of automation solutions that we support. And then we've basically kind of categorized 
what we do with the product into three different pillars. So there's unified observability. So that's the ability to bring all of these different automation solutions together into a single uh, pane of glass, a single platform to work with. Then there's um, SLA management. So we have you know, sophisticated SLA management, so you can put SLAs, actually we'll even create default SLAs for you on all of these different business services that you, that you have in place. And SLAs are an interesting topic because sometimes you talk to people, especially people using Airflow, they're like, well, we don't really have SLAs. There's no contractual obligation to have this DAG finished by a certain time or this task finished by a certain time. And that may be true. I mean, some customers, you may actually have contractual obligations with your customers that represent SLAs that you need to track. But even if you don't, you still have a general expectation that you're going to deliver your services reliably on time and in a meaningful way. So um, the lack of, of good, flexible SLA management with appropriate alerting, et cetera, is, is, is you know, one of the areas that we focus on and that we offer. And then the last one is automation intelligence. So how do you... I mean, one of the biggest things about automation intelligence that we use it for within AI is uh, predictability. So um, having accurate, dynamic predictions for your automation services as they're executing is really important. So as your automation services start executing, what we'll do within AI is begin monitoring them and predict when they're going to complete. And if we predict that you're going to miss an SLA, we can send you an alert oftentimes hours before the task that has the SLA even begins, that you're in jeopardy of missing it. And so all of that is part of the intelligence that we're offering on top of your automation data. So I'm going to go into each of these in a little bit more detail. So for unified observability, the one part of it that's important, of course, as I've mentioned, is being able to just have a single pane of glass across all of these different automation, you know, solutions that you have, or again, even if you're just running Airflow, across all of your Airflow instances in one single pane of glass. But it's more than just having, having everything consolidated. That's, that's a prerequisite. But then, how do you make meaning out of, these, out of these jobs? I mean, if you're running, if you've got hundreds of thousands of defined tasks, and they're typically going to have cryptic names and you know, not be meaningful to a business user, how do you put these into the context of, of the overall business of your organization? So that's one of the things that we offer within AI, is the very first thing you do when you do an installation is you create what we call a business area hierarchy. So you create a hierarchy of your lines of businesses, you can make it nested as many levels deep as you like, and inside of these lines of businesses, you begin to put your critical business processes. And again, this, is, this starts with identifying the endpoints of your critical processes. In the case of Airflow, you can, you can select a DAG itself and say this DAG represents, the completion of this DAG is, is, is a, represents a business process. You put a meaningful name on it that a business user can understand and an SLA. Then you can kind of file that, um, what, we, what we call a job stream, into one of your lines of business. So now you've got a nice business hierarchy. You've got your um, business services organized within that hierarchy. And now you can use it for filtering, monitoring, reporting. All the dashboards that we provide um, can now be filtered down to a certain line of business. So you suddenly can take this automation data, which is very cryptic by nature, and elevate its visibility to the business users within your organization. So that's one of the, the key um, value propositions of, of AI. And in terms of the unified observability uh, that we offer today, this is a list of the different automation solutions that we support today. So on the mainframe, um, we have a couple of Broadcom mainframe solutions, ESP and CA7. And then we also support IWS and Control-M on the mainframe. On the distributed side, we also support IWS and Control-M. And then Autosys and Atomic are the Broadcom offerings. And then we also support Tidal Enterprise Scheduler. And then, of course, we support 
Airflow. So we'll support native Apache Airflow or uh, Google Cloud Composer or um, MWAA. So all of that can be added into a single instance of your of AI. So once you once you've built this kind of environment where you've got all the, this data that's feeding in from all of these different automation solutions, and you've got it organized by line of business with your SLAs defined, then there's a whole host of insights that we can provide you with that against that data, both historical reports as well as real-time monitoring and predictive insights. So you can create dashboards, you can create reports, and I'm not going to show you a demo of the product. This is such a short session. Yeah, and just a little bit more about the dashboards because I think it's important. So we do have dashboards that are targeted towards different user profiles. So operators, for example, might want to be monitoring these different uh, business services and get real-time predictions of when they're going to complete. So if you have, let's say you've got like a pricing, or let's say you have a data pipeline that you know moves data from 10 different locations, consolidates them into a single you know, big query database, and then there's a bunch of processing that happens, and then it all results in the delivery of, uh, of a service, like a final endpoint where a, an end user can have access to the data that they want. So by defining that endpoint as having an SLA on it, you know, AI will automatically discover all the upstream dependencies, and when it begins to execute, AI will begin monitoring it and will predict when it's going to complete. So there's, there's dashboards and there's views for the operator to get insight into when all of these services um, are predicted to complete, and those predictions are dynamic. As things execute, if they take longer than we thought or shorter than we thought, we'll adjust the rest of the prediction, and the operator has a real-time view of what's happening. So that's kind of the operator business profile. And then there's the business users. And this one is so key because, you know, it's so, this data is so opaque. I mean, you guys are probably used to working with this airflow data. It seems normal to you, but to a business user, it's extremely dense and difficult to understand and make sense out of. So by, by using this, um, this uh, business area hierarchy and being able to have these data insights that look at your business services like month over month, so you might have, and again, you can filter this to any level of your business that you're interested in and understand the performance of these services month over month, um, that kind of thing. So you really get insight. You under, start to understand if you're seeing trends of degradation or you're missing your SLAs on Fridays or whatever it is. So these insights become really valuable. Yeah, with SLA management, I've kind of already talked about this, but just to kind of reiterate it a little bit because it's a little... Um, I don't have screenshots to, to walk you through this, but basically any task or job or container, so we think of a DAG as a container within AI, any task or DAG can represent the endpoint of a, of a job stream or a business service. And when you identify that endpoint, again, we look at all the dependencies, we understand all of the interconnectedness, discover everything, upstream and organize that all together into an object called a job stream. And we actually put a default SLA on that job stream. And that's based upon the historical data. We'll take a look and say, okay, well usually, I mean, if it's a service that runs once a day, we'll say, okay, well usually it finishes at around 5 p.m. plus or minus an hour. So we're gonna make the SLA 6 p.m. That's our default SLA. It's basically the average plus two standard deviations. Then you have the ability to override it. You say, okay, well, that might be the average plus two standard deviations, but we really want it to finish by 515. So you override it and you put a hard and fast SLA of 515. And that becomes really important because now when we make a prediction, we predict you're going to be late, it's always according to that SLA that you've defined. In some cases, you have these services that are running intraday. Either they're scheduled to run every 30 minutes, every hour, or they're triggered by an event and they just run whenever this event happens. And in that case, these services, the set, these sets of jobs might be, it might make more sense to define an SLA based on the overall duration. It takes, you know, two hours from start to finish to complete this entire process. And then that's what we'll 
trigger our identification of late based on is that is that SLA based on duration, which of course again you can override. So establishing the SLAs and then being able to predict them is really the kind of the key um, intellectual property really of, of AI because we can predict any of these automation solutions. We can predict your airflow DAGs, we can predict your autosys job streams, we can predict your mainframe, you know, all of that. The, the last thing about, about SLA management that I wanted to talk about is dynamical, dynamic critical path visibility. So this again is really important because if you, if you have these, if you identify this target job, which is what we call that endpoint job, and you discover everything that's upstream of it, in large environments, you might be discovering thousands of individual jobs. So out of those thousands of individual jobs, what you really want to focus on are just the ones that are in the critical path. And that is defined, the way we define it, as the critical path to the last job, to the target job. And so it can change. You might have some jobs that run longer on Mondays, so the critical path is different on Mondays, or today was an anom anomaly, a job failed, and um, it took a while to get it restarted, so today the critical path looks different than it did yesterday. So having visibility into the critical path really helps you understand where your bottlenecks are. So that's a big part of what we focus on um, within AI. And then we can look at that critical path history, and we can tell you which of your tasks are in the critical path the largest percentage of the time. So if you take a look at six months worth of executions of a certain business service and you identify you know, some job that is always in the critical path or it's in the critical path 90% of the time and it runs for an hour, you know that if you can optimize that job, either make it run for less time or change some dependencies so that it can run sooner, you'll be able to have you know, great visibility into your services and know where to optimize them. And then lastly is automation intelligence. So all of this prediction you know, that I'm talking about is really driven by, uh, by the data that we're collecting from uh, these automation engines. So what we're collecting is all of the definitional data. So this includes the, the task definitions, the dependencies, the calendar conditions, all the definitional data about your automation environment, as well as the individual tasks, execution data. So the start time, the end time, the termination status of every single task that's, or job that's running in your environment. So we accumulate all of this and build basically a giant data warehouse. And then from that data warehouse, um, along with our understanding of the conditions, the starting conditions for every job, we're able to um, create statistics about the jobs, about how, how often, how long they run, um, if they run for a different amount of time on a different day of the week, and then that's all incorporated into our predictions so that we can give you a really accurate prediction of if you're, if you're going to miss your SLA. So using that historical data is, is really um, a key component, again, of, uh, of AI. And not only are we calculating average durations for every single job, so even if you have you know, a million defined jobs, we're gonna calculate average durations on a daily basis for each of them. We're also gonna calculate historical trends for every single job, persist that trend information in the database so you can get great data insights that show you trending information. So it's really a needle in a haystack. Like show me all of my jobs that have been trending longer over the last 90 days. Like it's a very difficult statistic to get out of any automation engine. So that's the kind of thing that we do with our, with our data warehouse. And um, I am running out of time. I think I've covered most of this. Uh, well, one thing I just want to talk about alert noise reduction um, is that one of the benefits of managing, the, your S managing by SLA is that now we can really reduce the number of alerts that you get within your environment. Because instead of alerting if any individual job runs longer than a certain threshold, we can now only send alerts if your jobs one or more jobs has, have run sufficiently long that we're predicting that you're gonna miss your SLA. So you only get alerted if you're actually in jeopardy of having a problem with your business service. So it's fewer but more um, targeted alerts. 
and that's it. It's 